السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته uh, we introduce uh, cryptography we introduce the first lesson on cryptography because we didn't complete it uh, i think we have to skip the first uh, the first slides just because we introduced them in the lecture uh, okay i talk about myself and my uh, email and about the time of the course <clears throat> office hours target students and uh, uh, this course is not about hacking the textbook uh, okay teaching course description we also talk about uh, the situations that we meet we may need hacking I mean, uh, not hacking, I mean, we need cryptography. Uh, okay, and the schedule. And we introduce also an introduction. We give an introduction to chapter one. It's an introduction to uh, the computer security. Uh, we said that we have two types of uh, encryption, symmetric, asymmetric encryption, and we also talk about data integrity and authentication. We defined the difference between each one. We defined the computer security as, def as defined by National Institute of Standards. We said computer security is all about protecting the integrity, availability, and the confidentiality of information resources. We defined exactly what is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And we have examples in the lecture about them. Uh, also, we said we uh, it is moved to something called uh, Pentagon. This Pentagon contains uh, two extra uh, ages. The first one is authenticity and the second one is accountability. Uh, we also defined that the breach of security has three levels, low level, moderate level, and high level. We get an example on that. The threat and attack, we defined the difference between threat and attack. Uh, also, <clears throat> We define two types of attacks, the passive attack and the active attack. And we said passive attack uh, doesn't affect the data, but active effect, attack maybe uh, affect the data, delete it or change it. We introduced also some examples regarding passive attack. We said, uh, for example, Event dropping. Event dropping and dropping is trying to understand the conversation between the sender and the receiver. And also, we have um, a release of message content. Define what is the message content, and also traffic analysis, uh, just to extract passwords or secret information. And for the active attack, we said we have four types of active attacks. Masquerade, trying to to masquerade as a system uh, user. For example, <clears throat> try to uh, take the credentials of a system user. Reply means you reply instead instead of an real system item, real system component. You try to reply instead of it. For example, if the user is talking to the bank, you pretend that you are the bank and reply instead of the bank. So, uh, this way you can capture the credentials for logging uh, to the bank and you can withdraw the money from that user account. Modification of a message means the message can be modified tampered for some reasons. For example, 
maybe it is modified uh, to be used in a DOS attack or denial of service attack as we see at the last. Denial of service means not allowing the user, the normal user to be able to use the service. Uh, we also talk about authentication. We said authentication means to make sure that the, the source of data is authentic. Means, uh, for example, Ahmed sent me the message. I know this is from Ahmed, not from somebody else. The access control, and we define that access control has three levels. The first level is authentication. The second one is authorization. And the third one is accounting. And we define uh, three levels. These three levels, we call them triple A. We call them, I will write this. We call them triple A. A, A, A. The first A stands for uh, authentication. The second one is uh, authorization. And the third one is accounting. So for authentication, we said that we can have system like have system borders. If the system has a gate, we make authentication at, at the gate. Okay. So for example, if you have a subscription to night to a sports club, so you at the gate, the gatekeeper asks you for your ID. Authentication is asking for IDs. When you enter the system, you are not allowed to see everything. You are allowed to see places and not allowed to see places. This is done by authorization. Authorization means you are inside the system. For example, in our university, I am a teacher. I can see your marks and uh, apply some changes to these marks. But you, as a student, you cannot do that. So not all users inside the system can do absolutely all permissions, but they have collection of permissions. This is assigned by authorization. And monitoring. Monitoring or accounting is just to see that you are following the uh, access control system. You are not doing something bad inside the system. I monitor you. I supervise you. I register whatever action you do inside the system to define that what are you doing inside the system. Maybe you deny that you did it, but I can prove that you did it using the accounting functionality. Okay, so if we define access control, confidentiality, we said that uh, protection of transmitted data from passive attacks uh, maybe means not letting the hackers know the transmitted data. Okay, so uh, we apply some, we will talk about this in cryptography in the next chapters. We apply some methodology, not letting the hacker to know the the data sent between user and also for the protection of traffic flow from analysis means not letting the hacker be able to capture the data sent between users and analyze it to extract the secret information for data integrity we have we can apply a stream as a stream of messages integrity can be applied to a stream of messages or a single message and or even selected field inside a message i can make sure that the data is in, integrated means it, it is not a change while 
is sent between sender and receiver. There are two types of data integrity. The first one is connection-oriented integrity, and the second one is connectionless integrity. The connection-oriented integrity service deals with a stream of messages, assures that messages are received as sent with no duplication, insertion, modification, reordering, or replies. But for connectionless, it deals with individual message without regard to any larger context. So a connectionless doesn't care about the connection between the sender and the receiver, but the connection oriented makes sure that data is sent between sender and the receiver and uh, the data is is integrated without any change, no duplication, no insertion, no modification. So data ind integrity is mainly to make sure that the data is not a change between users. Non-repudiation, and as I told you, non-repudiation functionality is done using the last A in the access control. We said access control has triple A, we make sure of non-repudiation. Non-repudiation is somebody say, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. This is non-repudiation. If he said that, we, we have to make sure that that guy who did the action, we make sure that he did it, not somebody else. This is non-repudiation. So we prevent the sender or receiver from denying the transmitted message. Also, when a, a message is sent, the receiver can prove that the alleged sender in fact sent the message, nobody else. When the message is received, the sender can prove that the alleged receiver in fact received the message. So at the sender, we make sure that uh, the, the other, the, the recipient received the message and at the receiver, the receiver makes sure that that body who sent the message, for example, Ahmed sent the, mes the message, not nobody else. So this is non-repudiation. And for the availability service, it protects its system to ensure its availability. I want the system to be available 24 seven. The availability service makes sure, makes sure of this, makes sure that the system is available 24 seven. Actually it is not 24 seven, we call it five nines, which is 99 percentage of, uh, and uh, 99 point 99 900 okay let me write it okay let me write this uh better i think here because they are five nines so five ninety nine point nine 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 we our availability should follow this percentage the downtime must be very, very small downtime. Of course, we know systems are not perfect. So we don't want to have, nobody can have 100% percentage, but we can reach 99.999. Uh, and this way we have an available system. Uh, also, they call it five nines. You remember this word because they use it in security many times, five nines strategy. Uh, so our objective is to have, is to have these, these five nines. And for availability, how to make sure of availability? We can make sure of availability by uh, uh, making sure that devices are working perfectly. There is no 
problem in the devices. For, for example, the servers are working. We can have a backup of the data or even backup of the servers themselves. So of, if one of the servers is stopped, the service will not stop. Some, some other server will do the job instead of the one who, who has a problem. Uh, so this is availability. I make sure of availability by, for example, upgrading our uh, operating systems, upgrading the software, uh, applying patches, downloading, upgrade, and so on. We have availability server. We have the opponent of the availability server which is denial of service attack. And I also call it uh, not, uh, not only denial of service uh, attack, we call it DOS attack, DOS attack, DOS attack. And also we have a distributed version of DOS attack, which is DDOS attack. So we have two types of attacks. Denial of service attack is the opponent of availability server service so you can say availability depends on proper management it is all about proper management not just uh, uh, not just uh, concentrating on protecting the system itself it's all about management how to manage your hardware and make sure of everything is working without any problem Also maintenance for devices and resources is very important. Maintenance. Maintenance is important to make sure that availability service are there and have the, nine, the five nines criteria. To make sure that our system is good, so we have to design it in a fail safe way or we have to design it in a good way. Actually, there are some security fundamentals that we have to follow to make sure our system is secure. The first one is economy of mechanism, fail safe defaults, complete mediation, open design, separation of privilege, least privilege, least common mechanism, psychologically acceptability, isolation, encapsulation, modularity, layering, least at astonishing least as astonishing or least astonishment we talk about each one of them they they are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen they are the uh, fundamental security design we will talk about each one in a, a little detail the economy of mechanism means we if we design a specific mechanism, we have to make sure this mechanism is a small and simple. If you have complex design, this will lead to vulnerabilities and vulnerabilities will let the attackers in. For fail-safe defaults, fail-safe defaults means that the access decision should be based on a permission rather, rather, uh, rather than uh, uh, exclusion. This means the uh, the permission should be applied uh, for the user. Uh, the system should apply it for the user, not a problem in the system. Let the permission done. For example, I open the door for the user only with my system. I mean, if I have system to uh, access uh, control system to let the door open for the user, so the access control system should be able to open, to open the door for the user only if he has a permission to enter that door. But not a problem in the access control opened that door. That's what is fail safe means. So I can enter the system, I can have my permissions,
but the system will give me this permission. Not the permission is available because of a problem of the access control inside that system. That's the first step. Complete mediation means I, as a security system, the security system must be the mediator between two, two guys, which is uh, the user and the system. Mediation means, I mean, like, uh, if I can draw it like that, that would be fine. You can say mediation means we have a security system here or access control. We can say this is access control. The access control is a mediator between the user and the system, the system resources or system. This is a database and this is files. These are files and so on. So access control system is a mediator. Mediator means he has the full control of the access control. Nobody can pass by this access control. Must be mediator. Mediator something in the middle to control two parties. That's the definition of mediator. So the security system should be a mediator between two parties. And for open design means that even if the algorithm is known to public, the hacker cannot attack our system. Even if the security system design is known, even if it is designed, even if it is known, I mean. So even if the design is known, nobody can attack our system. But actually, if we talk about cryptographical algorithms, there are security keys. So the keys should be secure. The, the private keys should be secure. But I'm talking about the system or the cryptographic algorithm. Maybe the cryptographic algorithm is known, but our security is complete and no breaches to our system, even if the algorithm is known to the attackers. So this is open design. Separation of privilege. This means don't put all the eggs in one basket. You have to separate privilege. For example, if I want to change one of the markers of my students, I cannot do that. Maybe I can have a gift from the student and he can bribe me or something like that. And I will go to the website and change it. This way, because I have all the privilege to do that, I will change it. But if it is separated to different persons, this will, for example, somebody will agree, others will not agree. This is separation of privilege, not to put all tasks to one person. You have to distribute tasks to different persons or different users, because we are different. We don't agree generally on something unless it is, it, is, uh, it is accepted generally. We don't refuse something unless it is generally refused. But for somebody, if he is or she is only one user, maybe she will destroy our data or do, do something bad. But uh, if the, the privileges are separated between users, this will let our, this will let our uh, system more secure. For least privilege means, the least privilege principle means uh, uh, I, for example, if the user want to do something, I will not give him the entire permissions list. I just give him a permission to do that specific task, not to give him more than that. Just the privileges that let, that let, that let him do the task, okay? This least privilege, least common mechanism uh, means that the design should minimize the functions shared by different users. 
providing mutual security. This means uh, the design should minimize the, uh, some functions that shared by different users. Uh, just the, uh, the sharing is difficult in security because it lets the hackers to be part of the attack. They, the hackers may be shared with this uh, mechanism and they will affect our system. Psychologi psychologically acceptability means the user should accept the uh, mechanism. Maybe you have a strong security system, but it is, it is refused by the, the users. They don't like it. So for example, if I go to my website, I want to go to the bank account. Uh, I have been asked by my name, my ID number, my telephone number, and I have to enter my wife's name and so on. This way, I will hate that bank because it asks me to anything, too many things. But if he ask, if the bank asks me for my username and password, that is okay. Maybe uh, send me a, a number to my phone, and then I can enter the bank account. This uh, mechanism is easy and acceptable by users. But if it's complicated, they will hate your system. Isolation and encapsulations, they are different uh, types of, uh, they, they, ha they have common concept, they are common concept, but encapsulation is more uh, strict than isolation. So isolation means separate functionality to different modules, just to be able to handle that system because if you isolate functionality, the system design will be more modular and more easy to maintenance or easy to debug. And also encapsulation, the same thing. Encapsulation means that I use or I can protect the internal structure of the modules from outer uh, users. For example, if I have a class, you know, cl object-oriented programming, object-oriented programming, the main concept is uh, the encapsulation is used in that object-oriented programming, just to, to have a class and the internal structure of the class is not, uh, is not important for anybody uh, outer that class. So if I want to use this class, I don't care about the internal structure or the internal, uh, the internal variables. Just use the external allowed functionality. And also modularity. I told you that modularity is important just to make the design more simple and able to be handled. <clears throat> Layering means I define my system or approach, make it layers. And the layers also, modularity and layer, they are also um, basic concepts in designing and making the system more simpler to be able to handle it in case of failure or something. Least astonishing means the user should always respond in the way that least likely to astonish the user. For example, uh, if uh, the user has uh, something like uh, system, he is not used to use it. Maybe he, he's, do, he's going to do something not uh, proper for the system and let the hackers do the same. The mechanism for authorization should be transparent enough to a user that the user has a good intuitive understanding of how the security goals map to the provided security mechanism. So the user uh, shouldn't be astonished by your security system. So what about attack surfaces? 
attack surfaces means the vulnerabilities, the list of vulnerabilities into the system, inside the system. So list of vulnerabilities means open ports on outward facing web and other servers. This is an example of attack service. Services available available on the inside of a firewall. This, this is also an example of attack service. Code that processes incoming data, email, XML, office documents, and industry-specific custom data exchange formats. Interfaces, SQL, web forms, all these can be an attack service. An employee with an access to sensitive information. Yes, the employee also can be an attack service surface. So you can say any door for the attacker to enter our system. This is an attack surface. We have three types mainly for attack surfaces. The first one is network attack surface, software attack surface, and the last one is human attack surface. Network attack service is referring to the vulnerabilities over the enterprise network, a wide area network or the internet. Maybe you can access the enterprise network through the internet. As a hacker can enter and do that, this is a network attack service. Software attack surface refers to the vulnerabilities in our applications, utilities, operating system code, and so on. Software attack service, vulnerabilities into the operating system is even published on the websites and the other hackers can use them. Human attack surface means the vulnerabilities created by the personnel or outsiders. Maybe it is personnel, somebody inside the enterprise, or outsiders, somebody outside the enterprise, something like someone, somebody that like hacker or attacker from outside the enterprise. So maybe insider or outsider. This is a human attack surface. If you look at the x-axis, we have a small and large attack surface. If the attack surface is small, this means low security risk. If the attack surface is large, this is medium security risk. And for the y-axis, we have layering. Layering means uh, just to make sure the system is uh, secure. Okay, let me draw the layering concept. I don't know why he's talking about layering immediately without any introduction. The author of the book do that, but actually we can do that. For example, layering means that we have an asset. This is our asset. We want to protect our asset from any attack. We can use layering. Layering means this is the first layer of security. This is the second layer of security. And this is the third layer of security and so on. Okay. The first layer, maybe uh, the camera and uh, other uh, things that we can protect directly our assets and maybe this is uh, the last one is a router uh, to the internet if the attacker is able to enter the first layer for example break the router he can he will be faced with other layers of security he will not be able to reach the assets because because the assets are too far away from him so if we have deep, deep means we have many layers or shallow, shallow means we have just little layers. If we have deep layers, so we have low security risk, but if we have shallow layers, maybe one or two layers only, so we have a medium security risk. And the intersection between X, Y, X, y axis give us, if the system attack surface is very large, and the layering is shallow, so we have a high risk here.
This is for the uh, tax surface. And this is also, this drawing is important because it describes the model for network security. Network, network security talk about sender and receive, receiver. A message is sent between two parties, the sender and the recipient. Uh, the message is sent into a channel. That channel, we have an opponent is standing here waiting for uh, data to be captured, data to be transmitted, to be able to capture it. When the sender wants to send a message, we apply our security system here. We have a secure message. Then we send that secure message into the information channel. Now this message is secure. Nobody can capture it. It arrives to the receiver as a secure message, and we have the opposite functionality here. Just to get the secure message to its original state, and the recipient can read the message here. Okay? Okay. So this is the, new, the model for network security. We have sender, receiver again. We have a sender and receiver. We have a message. That sender wants to send this message to the recipient, and it will pass by an uh, unsecured channel. So we have to secure our message. We apply a security module here to secure our message before sending it to that secure channel. When it arrives to the recipient, the recipient will be able to do the opposite operation okay, and extract that message and read. And also we have network access security model. Network access security model is a gate model, a gatekeeper model. We have a gatekeeper function. The gatekeeper function means that the opponent and the human software, anything will have uh, we'll try to use the access channel to reach our information system. But good for us, we have a gatekeeper here. The gatekeeper functionality uh, uh, get the bad guys out. So if bad guy want to access our, our information system, information system is a general concept. It's just talking about computing resources, even people or the organization's employees inside the system is part of the information system. Data is part of the information system. Processes and operations are parts of information system. Software is a part of information system. Internal security controls are part of information system. The employees into the, yeah, they are part of information system. So we want to protect our information system from the attackers using the gatekeeper. If somebody wants to access our system through the access channel, the gatekeeper is standing there protecting our system from hackers. And that's all for this lecture. And I will, I will uh, introduce the other part for lecture two because we missed the many concepts i will repeat them in the next le lecture inshallah thank you thank you for listening to me thank you for attending the le this lecture and see you in the near future goodbye Assalamu alaikum.